Hello students, how are you all? Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today's topic will be ratio and proportion. So ratio and proportion, these are two different things. So let us understand it first. Let's say you are having a bowl of fruits and in that bowl, let's say you are having eight mangoes and let's say six oranges. So can I say the ratio of mangoes to that of oranges, it will be what? Eight by six. Can I say the ratio of mangoes to the total number of fruit, it will be 8 by 14, 1 fourth. That means what we are taking here, we are taking the ratio of same quantities. That means what is the ratio? Ratio, it can be comparison of any two quantities. That quantity should be of same kind. That means quantity taken on the numerator it should be similar to that of quantity which is to be taken on denominator okay so this is a very important thing that the ratio while taking the ratio the quantity should be of same kind now what is proportion let's say you are having one row whose length and weight are in proportion means let's say 20 meter of rope weights 1 kg. That means your 20 meter length ki jo rope hai, uska weight kitna hai? 1 kg. And what we have initially assumed that the length and weight are in proportion. That means, let's say if the length is increased to 40 meter, can I say the weight of the rope, it will be 2 kg? Why? See, initially the length 20 meter, weight 1 kg. Right? If now length increases to 40 meter, weight will be again double. So from 1 kg, it will be 2 kg. So in this example, it's a proportion. Length to that of weight. So length and weight are in proportion. Okay. So only this concept we are going to extend further in this topic. We will see some basic formulas, basic terminologies in ratio and proportion. And we will see 10 to 15 very good example of this topic. So without wasting time, let us begin today's session. And if you have not still subscribed my YouTube channel, please do it so that it will reach to the maximum student. And if you have not subscribed my YouTube channel, Please do it right now. So the today's topic is ratio and proportion. So what is a ratio? Now ratio is a comparison of two quantities, right? The two quantities must be of same kind. Now this is important. Two quantities must be of same kind. There can be a ratio between rupees 20 and rupees 30, but there cannot be a ratio between rupees 20 and 30 mangoes. If we take a ratio of rupees to that of rupees, yes, it is valid. But if you are taking a ratio of rupees to that of, let's say number of fruit, it is not valid. You cannot take such type of ratio. So ratio should be of same quantities. Now the ratio three to five, can be written as 3 upon 5. This everything knows. This everybody knows. Now what is 3 here? 3 is the first term or it is called as antecedent. What is 5 here? 5 is the second term or it is called as consequent. So you call it as numerator, first term or antecedent. It is one and the same. You call it as denominator, second term or consequent. So these are all similar terms. Okay, so one must know what are the different terminologies used in case of ratio. Now, the ratio does not change if both of its terms are multiplied or divided by the same number. That means, let's say you are having a ratio 3 upon 5, 3 to 5. Let's say you have multiplied numerator and the denominator by 3. So 3 into 3, 9. 5 into 3, 15. So 9 upon 15 is same as that of 3 upon 5. Okay, so if you, if you are multiplying numerator 
and denominator or if you are dividing a numerator and denominator with same number the ratio will not change for example let's say in second case you have multiplied numerator and denominator by 10 so 3 into 10 30 5 into 10 50 so 30 upon 50 is same as that of 3 upon 5 okay so remember these terminologies and this basic rule now let us see what are the different types of ratios so first is duplicate ratio now what is duplicate ratio if we if you are taking a square of numerator and denominator that is called as duplicate ratio for example you are having 3 upon 5 so 3 square 9 5 square 25 so 9 upon 25 is the duplicate ratio of 3 upon 5 okay next triplicate ratio now triplicate name only suggests if you are taking cubes of numerator and denominator so 3 cube and 5 cube so 3 cube is 27 5 cube is 125 so 27 upon 27 upon 125 it is what it is a triplicate ratio of 3 upon 5 okay next sub duplicate ratio now what is sub duplicate ratio if you are taking a square root if you are taking a square root of the given ratio it is called as sub duplicate ratio for example 3 upon 5 is the sub duplicate ratio of 9 upon 25 see 9 upon 25 if we take a square root of this if we take the square root so it will be what 3 upon 5 so 3 upon 5 is called as what sub duplicate ratio of 9 upon 25 okay now what is sub triplicate ratio now let's say you are having a 27 upon 125 if you are taking a cube root cube root of it so it will be what what is cube root of 27 3 what is cube root of 125 5 so 3 upon 5 3 upon 5 is the sub triplicate ratio of 27 upon 125 okay so here it is wrongly written what should be statement statement will be 3 upon 5 is the sub triplicate ratio of 27 upon 125 okay now what is inverse or reciprocal ratio now if a as to b is the given ratio so b as to a is its inverse ratio simply you have to take the inverse that means you have to change the numerator and the denominator for example 5 upon 3 is the inverse ratio of 3 upon 5 so 3 upon 5 is the initial ratio which is given if you want to find out its inverse just alternate the numerator and denominator so it will be 5 it will be 5 upon 3 now what is compound ratio now this is important the ratio of product of antecedent to that of consequent of the two or more given ratio what is compound ratio it is the ratio of product of antecedent to that of consequent of two or more given ratio for example a as to b and c as to d are the two given ratio that means a upon b and c upon d then its compound ratio will be a into c to that of b into d for example let's say these are the three ratios given to you 1 upon 2 3 upon 5 8 upon 7 now what are the antecedent 1 3 8 what are the consequent 2 5 7 so you have to take the product of antecedent and product of consequent so 1 into 3 into 8 it will be 24 2 into 5 into 7 it will be 70 so what will be the compound ratio of the 1 upon 2 3 upon 5 and 8 upon 7 it will be 24 upon 70 so sometimes in the exam it is asked to find the compound ratio so simply you have to take the product of antecedent and the product of consequent okay it's a very simple concept now what is proportion 
the equality of two ratio is called as proportion the equality of two ratio is called as proportion if a upon b is equal to c upon d if a upon b is equal to c upon d then a b c and d are said to be in proportion and we can write a as to b to that of c as to d how to read a as to b to that of c as to d okay we have seen initially proportion example of proportion okay again if you want i can repeat let's say you are having one row whose length and weight are in proportion that means they are in see you are having you you have come across directly proportional inversely proportional so it is same as that of okay so if length and weight are in proportion that means if length increases weight will increase if length decreases weight will decrease so length and weight they will they will walk parallel okay they are in proportion okay now if you are considering this a has to b to that of c has to d so a is the first term b is the second term c third term d is fourth term so the middle one b and c it is called as mean and those are on extreme that is first and fourth these are called as extreme terms so second and third term are called as mean terms okay while first and fourth terms are called as extreme terms for example 3 as to 4 to that of 12 as to 16 yes it is a proportion 3 upon 4 and 12 upon 16 it is nothing but 3 upon 4 only okay then 2 as to 5 to that of 10 as to 25 what is 10 upon 25 so 5 twos are and 5 fives are so 5 into 2 and 5 into 5 so 2 upon 5 so this is the examples of what proportion so second and third terms are called as mean term while first and fourth these are called as extreme term okay now there are some basic formulas so first one is the product of mean is equal to the product of extreme if we take a product of second and third term it should be equal to the product of first and fourth term product of mean is equal to product of extreme next what is mean by fourth proportion now let's say you are having a proportion a has to b to that of c has to x so can i write a upon b is equal to c upon x yes so fourth proportional that means fourth term how you can calculate fourth term fourth term will be what c into b upon a it will be what cross if you take the if you do the cross multiplication so it will be c into b upon a so this is called as what fourth proportional for example if it is asked find the fourth proportional of 2 4 6 so what is 2 here 2 here it is a what is 4 here 4 is b what is 6 here it is c so b into c it will be 24 divided by a 2 so 24 divided by 2 it is equal to 12 so what is fourth proportional of 2 4 6 it is 12 So you have to remember this formula. Now next is what is third proportional? Now a upon b is equal to b upon x. A upon b is equal to b upon x, or x is equal to what will be x? X is equal to b square upon a. It's called as third proportional. Is called as what? Third proportion. For example, if it is asked, find the third proportional of two five. So what is a here two? What is b here five? So what will be b square upon a? B square means five square upon a. So twenty five upon two. It is equal to twelve point five. So this is how you will calculate third proportional. Okay. Next. What is mean proportional? 
let's say if a upon x is equal to x upon b so can i say x square is equal to a b can i say x square is equal to a b which is called as mean proportional for example let's say if it is asked to find mean proportional of 2 and 8 mean proportional of 2 and 8 so what is a 2 what is b here 8 so what will be a b 16 so x square is equal to 16 so can i calculate x x x will be equal to what 4 square root of 16 so it will be 4 so 4 will be mean proportional of 2 and 8 okay so hope you are getting how to calculate fourth proportional how to calculate third proportional how to calculate mean proportional now this is an important thing if a upon b is equal to c upon d then by componendo rule we can write a plus b upon b is equal to c plus d upon d this is called as componendo now what is dividendo dividendo is a minus b upon b is equal to c minus d upon d and what is componendo and dividendo a plus b upon a minus b is equal to c plus d upon c minus d okay so these are different rules related to a ratio componendo rule dividendo rule and componendo and dividendo rule okay so you can note down you can pause the video here and you can note down these basic rules of ratio now so this is all about a theory part now let us begin with so let us begin with the examples so example number one divide rupees 500 among a b c and d okay so i think your typing mistake is there so it should be here a b c and d okay it should be a b c and d so that a and b together get thrice as much as c and d together a and b together get thrice as much as c and d together b gets four times that of c while c gets 1.5 times as much as d now the value of what b gets is okay so you may find that the example is lengthy but it is very simple so you are having a rupees 500 okay which is to be distributed among a b c and d so can i say a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 500 is it right why because you are having rupees 500 which is to be distributed among four let's say four people a b c and d that means rupees a k pass b k pass c and d k pass in charo k pass mila ke kitne rupees rehenge 500 now what is given that see read the second statement here a and b together get thrice as much as c and d together okay that means can we write here a plus b is equal to three times c plus d jitna a plus b ke pass jitna a and b ke pass hai a, ke a and b ke pass kitna hai thrice as much as c and d they are having okay so we can write a plus b is equal to three times c plus d so if we put this in the first equation if we put this here so what you will get 
4 times c plus d is equal to 500 c a plus b what is a plus b a plus b is 3 times c plus d so 3 times c plus d plus c plus d it will be 4 times so 4 times c plus d is equal to 500 so c plus d is equal to 125 if we divide it with 4 here so it will be 125 so 3 times c plus d 3 times c plus d is what a plus b so a plus b is equal to 375 so hope you have cleared with these two terms how we have calculated c plus d how we have calculated a plus b now read the next statement b get four times that of c so can i write b is equal to 4c can i write yes we can write it now c gets 1.5 times that of d so can i write c is equal to 1.5 times d okay now c plus d is equal to what 125 now c plus or instead of c what we can write 1.5 d so 1.5 d plus d it will be what 2.5 so 2.5 d is equal to 125 so what will be d 125 divided by 2.5 it will be 50 it will be 50 so if d is equal to 50 can i calculate c if d is equal to 50 you can put this d see here you can put this d here d is what 50 so c is equal to what 75 is it right okay now you can calculate c and d easily now if c is equal to 75 if c is equal to 75 to calculate b you can put the value of c here so 4 into 75 it will be 300 so how much b will have b will have 300 okay so even the example looks some lengthy but it is a very simple problem okay only you have to form the equation based on the statement so initially we are having 500 which is to be distributed among four people so we have assumed the four people as a b c d so a plus b plus c plus d is equal to 500 now jitna a plus b ke pas kitni quantity hai thrice as compared to c and d so we have written one statement a plus b is equal to three times c plus d then b ke pas kitni quantity hai four times that of c so b is equal to 4c abhi c ke pas kitna hai 1.5 times that of d so we have written c is equal to 1.5 d so four unknown four equations so you can simply find it out okay now once you practice it will be you can do a fast calculation okay now let us see example number two in a mixture of 40 liters 40 liters so we are having one mixture of 40 liters a mixture of what milk and water the ratio of milk and water is 4 as to 1 how much water must be added to this mixture so that the ratio of milk and water becomes 2 as to 3 okay so what is initial initially it is given that there is a mixture of milk and water what is the quantity 40 liters now in that 40 liters what is the ratio of milk to that of water 4 as to 1 now it is asked how much water is to be added to that mixture so that the ratio of milk and water becomes 2 as to 3 initially it was 4 as to 1 now you have to add the water so that the ratio will be 2 as to 3 okay so hope you have understood the problem first that is very important thing now let us consider there is x liter of water is there so i have assumed what we have to find out we have to find out how much water is to be added so i have assumed quantity of water as x now in the 40 liters what is the ratio of milk and water it is 4 as to 1 so can i say 4x as to x will be what milk as to water is it right now since there is 40 liters so this 40 liters how i can divide i can divide it in 32 as to 8 why 32 as to 8 what should be the ratio 4 as to 1 so 32 upon 8 what it will be can i say 
फोर एस टू वन इट विल बी वॉट फोर एस टू वन दैट इज वॉट द रिक्वायर फोर एस टू वन ओके सो वॉट आई हैव डन आई हैव डिवाइडेड द टोटल क्वांटिटी ऑफ लीटर्स द टोटल क्वांटिटी ऑफ मिक्सचर इन टू वॉट सेपरेट मिल्क एंड सेपरेट वॉटर सो दैट द गिवन रेशियो इज टू बी वी कैन मेंटेन द गिवन रेशियो एंड वॉट इज द गिवन रेशियो फोर एस टू वन सो कैन ए से इन फोर्टी लीटर्स ऑफ मिक्सचर देर इज थर्टी टू लीटर ऑफ मिल्क एंड एट लीटर्स ऑफ वॉटर कितना सी मिक्सचर कितना है फोर्टी लीटर्स तो फोर्टी लीटर्स को कैसे डिवाइड करना है so that हमें मिल्क टू दैट ऑफ वॉटर वॉट रेशो वी वॉन्ट वी वॉन्ट फोर एस टू वन ओके सो कैन एस एर इज थर्टी टू लीटर्स ऑफ मिल्क एंड एट लीटर्स ऑफ वॉटर सो इफ यू टेक मिल्क एस टू वॉटर थर्टी टू एस टू एट इट विल बी फोर एस टू वन नाउ सी इन द सेकेंड केस वॉट इज एडेड ओनली वॉटर इज एडेड हाउ मच वॉटर इज एडेड that we have to find out that we have consider as x so can i say 32 upon 8 upon x see 32 is what milk 32 is what milk what is the denominator it is what water it is what water so how much water is added x is added so 32 upon 8 plus x that ratio becomes what 2s to 3 so if you solve this If you solve this, what you will get? You will get x is equal to x is equal to forty liters. That means if you add forty liters, forty liters of what? Forty liters of water into the given mixture, then the ratio of milk and water it will be two as to three. Okay, it's a very simple concept. Okay, what we have done here? you are having a total quantity of mixture you have divided the total quantity into its component milk and water in this case okay and what is asked how much water is to be added so we have we have assumed that x liter is to be added so 32 upon 8 plus x it will be ratio will be what 2s to 3 2 upon 3 so simply you can solve this equation and you can get x is equal to 40 okay so we are understanding each an example very sincerely and we are we are going in depth okay we are understanding the meaning of each terms which is given in the problem or in the example okay see if you look it looks very simple only in 3 to 4 steps you will get the answer okay so once you practice you can divide this 40 liter by your own in the mind itself that it will be 32 and 8 so simply if you are practicing regularly you should be able to write this step directly 32 upon 8 plus x is equal to 2 upon 3 so simply do the cross multiplication and you will get x okay so let us see the next example now the example says if three numbers are in the ratio 1s to 2s to 3 and half the sum is 18 the ratio of squares of the number is okay so initially three numbers are given the numbers are in the ratio 1s to 2s to 3 now it is given if we take the half of the sum of this number it will be 18 and what has been asked it has been asked what will be the square of the numbers okay they have not simply asked what is the number they have asked the square of the number okay so again this is a very simple example uh, so let's say the numbers are x x to 2x s to 3x why because the ratio are in the what is the numbers numbers are in the ratio 1s to 2s to 3 so i have assume x 2x 3x now what is given half the sum is what 18 so 1 by 2 in bracket x plus 2x plus 3x is equal to 18 so 3 plus 2 5 
5 plus 1 6 6x upon 2 is equal to 18 so what you can write 6x is equal to 36 x is equal to 6 if x is equal to 6 so numbers will be 6 12 18 see x is what 6 so 2x will be 12 3x will be 18 so number will be 6 12 18 they have not asked the number what they have asked ratio of the squares of the number so 6 square 36 12 square 144 18 square 324 so what will be the ratio 1 as to 4 as to 9 1 as to 4 see 36 into 4 144 36 into 9 324 so you can take the ratio you will have the answer 1 as to 4 as to 9 okay see example is simple but little bit calculations are involved now you can do this fast calculation with practice only okay so hope you are clear with example number three see all the examples are different so i have included maximum types of example different example in this exercise now example number four says the income of a and b are in the ratio three as to two income of a and b there are two percent a and b income are in the ratio 3 as to 2. Their expenditure, kitna wo spend kar rahe hai, kitna wo kharcha kar rahe hai, that is in the ratio of 5 as to 3. If each saves, that means A and B both saves 1000, A's income will be. Okay. Now, see here. Deko, income kitna hai? Income of A and B, it is in the ratio of 3s to 2. What is expenditure? It is in the ratio of 5s to 3. How much they save? 1000 rupees each. So what they have asked? A's income. So first problem is clear to everyone. Okay. The question here is, how you can calculate saving? Dekho. For example, let's say there is X income is there. Let's say rupees 100 is the income let's say he is spending 80 rupees what will be saving 20 how you are calculating saving income minus expenditure is equal to saving what is saving income minus expenditure so if you consider this for a and if you consider this for b so can I write 3x? Can I write 3x minus 5y is equal to 1000? Income minus expenditure is equal to saving. So 3x minus 5y is equal to 1000. Can I write 2x minus 3y is equal to 1000? Again, income minus expenditure. Why 1000? 1000? Because it is given each sales group is 1000. A and B both. So we can easily write equation number one and equation number two. Now, how to solve this? Let us multiply the equation number one by two. 6x minus 10y is equal to 2000. Let us multiply equation number two by three. 6x minus 9y is equal to 3000. So if we subtract this, what you will get? Minus y is equal to minus 1000. That means y is equal to 1000. If y is equal to 1000, what will be x? x is equal to 2000. You can put the value of y in any one of the equation and you can calculate x. So what is asked age income? What is age income? See, what is A's income? A's income is 3x. So 3 into x, 3 into 2000, it will be 6000. So 6000 will be your answer. Okay. So what basic rule we have seen here? How to calculate savings? Saving is equal to income minus expenditure. So from this formula, we have obtained the two equation. We have solved those two equation for the two unknowns and we have calculated the required thing. Now, let us see next example. The ratio of sines of triangle 
is 1s2 1s2 root 2 then the ratio of square of the greatest side to the sum of the squares of the other two side is okay so i think most of the students may not have understood the example so again we are going to read it if the ratio of sine of the angles of a triangle is 1s2 1s2 root 2 then that means there is one triangle is given sines of the angles of triangle how you can calculate sin theta sin theta is equal to opposite side upon hypotenuse side so the ratio of sines of angles of triangle is given 1s2 1s2 root 2 what is asked the ratio of square of the greatest side to that of sum of the squares of other two side okay let us consider a triangle abc let us consider a triangle abc okay now can i say sin a as to sin b as to sin c is equal to 1s2 1s2 root 2 so from this can i write sin a as to sin b is equal to 1s2 1 meaning is what what is sin sin is opposite upon hypotenuse if sin of two angles are equal that means what the angles are equal only now in a triangle two angles are equal so what will be those angle it will be right angle triangle yes one angle will be 90 other two angles will be 45 45 how 45 45 see what is the sum of the measures of all angles of a triangle 180 out of three angle two angles are equal so it will be 45 plus 45 plus 90 it will be 180 okay 90 plus 90 it will be 180 that means it is what it is which triangle triangle it's a right angle triangle okay now okay we have concluded that it's a right angle triangle now what is asked the ratio of square of greatest side which one is the greatest side a b c how this is a right angle triangle okay what is sine of a b c upon a b yes okay what is sine of angle b what is sine b ac upon ab now sine a upon sine a is equal to sine b that means bc upon ab is equal to ac upon ab means what meaning is what here meaning is bc is equal to ac that means this and also this two angles are equal see it's a isosceles isosceles right angle triangle two sides are equal so this angle will be 45 45 and this will be your 90 so this one is the greatest side this one is the greatest side so a b square what is our square of the greatest side a b square to that of sum of the squares of other two sides what is sum of the squares of other two sides two sides are bc and ac so ac square plus bc square is it right sum of the squares of two sides what is sum of the squares of two sides so ac plus bc to that of square is it right so it will be what it will be 1 as 2 1 yes have you cleared with this problem so it is very interesting problem it is given the ratio of sines of angles of a triangle it is not a ratio of angles of a triangle it's a ratio of sines of angles of a triangle okay so with this so see it is example of ratio but it is included some geometrical concept also so such type of problem definitely it has the you will find in different competitive exam okay it is not a direct question it includes some little bit geometry also okay you have to conclude so to solve such type problem one must know the geometry behind it geometrical concept what is sign if it's a isosceles triangle what is the sum of the measures of all angles of a triangle so these are all basic things but one must know how to apply it okay 
so i will say this is a very classic and very important example okay now one more thing is there some of might be thinking that how this ratio is equal to 1 okay this is which type of triangle it is a right angle triangle in case of right angle triangle if we apply the pythagoras theorem what it will be ac square plus bc square is equal to ab square so ac square plus bc square what is this this is nothing but what this is nothing but what this is equal to ab square only this is equal to what ab square only so ab square upon ab square it will be 1 as to 1 okay so i think it is clear to you now okay now let us see the next example so i am again saying all are the different examples okay now divide 680 among abc such that a gets 2 by 3 of what b get and b gets 1/4 of what c get so what is the share of c okay <clears throat> so you are having abc you have to divide this root is 680 so 680 is equal to a plus b plus c now a gets 2 by 3 of what b gets so can we write a is equal to 2/3 of b okay now b gets 1/4 of c so can i write b is equal to 1/4 of c is it right so can we write 4b is equal to c so a is equal to 2/3 of b what is c c is equal to 4 times b so 680 is equal to what is a c you have to put now these values here so 680 is equal to what is a a is 2/3 of b plus b plus what is c c is equal to 4b c is equal to 4b so if you solve this you will get 680 is equal to 17 by 3b so b is equal to 120 if b is equal to 120 cal we can calculate we can calculate c 4 times b so it will be 480 it will be what 480 so 480 will be the share of c okay so it is a very simple example so we will not spend much time on this now the students in three batches are in the ratio 2s to 3s to 5 if 20 students are increased in each batch the ratio changes to 4s to 5s to 7 the total number of student in the three batches before the increase were okay so let this student be 2x 3x 5x yes the ratio is what 2s to 3s to 5 so i have assume number of students 2x as to 3x as to 5x now 20 students are increased in each batch so 2x plus 20 3x plus 20 5x plus 20 okay now if you are adding 20 students in each batch the ratio will be what 4s to 5s to 7 so this ratio it will be 4s to 5s to 7 so if you solve this you will get x is equal to 10 how 10 see you can take you can choose this from option also see x is equal to 10 so 10 into 2 20 plus 20 40 40s to So x is equal to thirty. So thirty plus twenty is forty as to fifty as to seventy. It will be what four as to five as to seven. That means x is equal to what ten. If x is equal to ten, what will be this ratio? Twenty as to thirty as to fifty. So two as to three as to five. What is asked here? The total number of students in three batch before the increase. so before the increase will be what 2s to 3s to 5 only okay and if we add 20 the ratio will be 40s to 50s to 70 okay i think there is no need to do all this calculation if it is asked the total number of students before the increase 
obviously it will be what 2s to 3s to 5 only you can directly get so it is a time consuming one may get confused and he will do all the calculation you can directly give the answer now the speed of the three cars are in the ratio 2s to 3s to 4 the ratio between the time taken by these cars to travel the same distances okay so what is speed speed is equal to distance upon time what is speed speed is equal to distance upon time the ratio of three car are in the ratio 2s to 3s to 4 so if the distance travel by the car is same if the distance travel by the car is same can i say the ratio of time taken will be 1s to 2 as to 1s to 3 as to 1s to 4 is it right if distance is same then speed is inversely proportional to that of time if distance see what is speed speed is equal to distance upon time if distance is same so speed is what inversely proportional to time so if speed is in the ratio of 2s to 3s to 4 what will be the ratio of time taken by the car it will be inverse okay so 1s to 2 as to 1s to 3 as to 1s to 4 so what will be lcm lcm will be 12 so it will be 6 as to 4 as to 3 so 6 as to 4 as to 3 so the ratio of time taken by the cars to travel the same distance it will be 6 as to 4 as to 3 okay so it is based on the concept speed is equal to distance upon time now after an increment of 7 in both the numerator and denominator the fraction changes to 3 upon 4 what is the original fraction so it is very simple example let's say the ratio is x upon y so if we add 7 to numerator and denominator x plus 7 upon y plus 7 the ratio will be 3 upon 4 so simply you have to solve this so 4x plus 28 is equal to 3y plus 21 so 4x plus 7 is equal to 3y now there are two unknowns but you are having only one equation so from the options only you can find it out okay there is no any other method you have to take one by one all the options you have to put x upon y and you have to check whether you are getting the ratio 3 upon 4 or not so if we take x upon y is equal to 2 upon 5 it will satisfy the given condition x upon y is equal to 2 upon 5 okay that means what 5x is equal to 2y so if we consider 5x is equal to 2y definitely you will get x up x plus 7 upon y plus 7 is equal to 3 upon 4 so such type of problem basically you have to you have to go to the options only choose the proper option then only you can solve it why because there is two unknowns are there but only one equation so you cannot solve this okay so if options are were given to you you can find the answer now the difference between two positive number is 10 the difference between two positive number is 10 and the ratio between them is 5s to 3 find the product of two number now such type of problem yes you will get in the exam so difference between two positive number is 10 so can i write can i assume two numbers are x and y so x minus y is equal to 10 this is equation number one now can i say the ratio of the ratio between them is 5 s to 3 so x upon y is equal to 5 upon 3 so x upon y let's say 5 t has to 3 t so if we put this in the equation number one so what is x x is equal to 5 t so 5 t minus what is y y is equal to 3 t so 3 t is equal to 10 see t it can have any value starting from 1 to infinity let's say t is equal to 1 so 5 s to 3 so ratio remains same okay if say t is equal to 2 so the ratio will be what it will be 
10 divided by 6 again you will get 5 as to 3 see we have seen one rule if we multiply or divide numerator and denominator with the same number the ratio will not change so what i have done i have divided the numerator and denominator i have multiplied i have multiplied with new i have multiplied with t to the numerator and denominator so x is equal to 5t y is equal to 3t and uh, now i will put this 5t and 3t in the equation number one so 5t minus 3t is equal to 10 so 2t is equal to 10 so t is equal to 5 t is equal to 5 so if t is equal to 5 what will be x 25 what will be y 3t so 3 into 5 15 so x is 25 y is equal to 15 what is asked product of the two numbers so what will be product 25 into 15 is equal to 375 okay so this is a very important example many of the times you will find such type of problem in competitive exams okay so next example the present ratio of ages of a and b is 4 as to 5 18 years ago the ratio was 11 as to 16 find the sum of their present ages so let the ages are 4x as to 5x okay now 18 years ago so it will be 4x minus 18 divided by 5x minus 18 this ratio will be 11 as to 16 so there is only one unknown one equation so if you do the cross multiplication 64x minus 288 is equal to 55x minus 198 so 9x is equal to 90 so x is equal to 10 if x is equal to 10 what will be ages 40 and 50 and what will be the sum of their present ages it will be 40 plus 50 is equal to 90 so this is a very simple example but important one now next example a mixture contain milk and water in the ratio 5 s to 1 on adding 5 liters of water the ratio of milk to that of water becomes 5 s to 2 what is a quantity of milk in the mixture so it, can, it is also same problem such type of problem we have seen already so i will suggest you please pause the video here and try to solve it so milk and water it will be 5x as 2x so if you are adding see see here this should not be here what you are adding you are adding only what what we are adding we are adding only water so 5x upon x plus 5 is equal to 5 upon 2 is it right is it right see milk and water and the are in the ratio 5 s to 1 so i assume 5x as to x okay now 5x upon x plus 5 is equal to 5 upon 2 why because we are adding only water so x plus 5 initially it was x water now x plus 5 so if you do the cross multiplication it will be 10x is equal to 5x plus 25 so it will be 5x is equal to 25 x is equal to 5 if x is equal to 5 what will be milk as to water 25 as to 10 see what is the ratio 5x as to x so x is equal to what 5 so 25 as to what should be here it should be 5 here is it right or it is 10 see it should be 10 only why 10 see initially it is 5 but we are adding 5 liters so 5 plus 5 5 plus 5 it will be 10 so milk will be of 25 liters water will be 10 liters then only the ratio will be 5 upon 2 okay Now the last example, a flask contains a mixture of 49 liters of wine and water in the proportion 5s to 2. 
how much water must be added to it so that the ratio of wine to water may be 7 as to 4. Okay. So there is one flask which contains 49 liters of wine. Okay. Now 49 liters of mixture is there. Mixture of what? Wine and water. And what is the proportion? 5 as to 2. So can I assume let wine and water be 5x and 2x liters? So can I write 5x plus 2x is equal to 49? Okay, total is what? Total quantity of mixture is what? 49 liters. So 7x is equal to 49. x is equal to what? 7. So what will be quantity of wine? 5x that is 35. And what will be the quantity of water? 2x. So 2 into 7, it will be 14. Okay. So you have got initially how much quantity of wine is there and how much quantity of water is there. Now what is been asked? How much water must be added so that the ratio of wine to water it will be 7 as to 4. We are adding what? We are adding we are adding what? We are adding water. So 35 is what? Quantity of wine. 35 divided by 14 plus let's say W quantity is added. Quantity of water. So 14, initially it was 14. 14 plus some quantity is added. This ratio is what? 7 as to 4. 7 upon 4. So if you solve this, you have to calculate W. So it will be 98 plus 7W is equal to 140 if you do the cross multiplication. Okay. So 7W is equal to 42. So W is equal to 6. So how much water must be added? So answer is what? 6 liters. Answer will be what? 6 liters. Okay. So this is all about from my side. So we have seen in this lesson basic difference between ratio and proportion then different basic terminologies which has been asked or which is normally used in case of ratio and proportion okay then different formulas to calculate ratio and proportion and different examples so all the examples i i have covered here okay you will get such type of problem in the exam. So hope you have liked my video. If you are finding it useful, please don't forget to share with your friends. And if you have not till subscribe my YouTube channel, please do it and hit the notification bell. So that whenever I am uploading the next video, you will get the message of it. And if you have not seen my previous video, I have, you can find the link of those video in the description box. So hope you have cleared with this topic that is ratio and proportion. So I'm ending this session here. Thank you.